Hi, this is an unboxing and detailed product review of the newer model TM254 plus TA60. I assume the TM254 is the tripod while the head is probably the TA60. If this is going to be shipped, you can see the mass is just over 2.4 kilograms and the uh, width of this box or packaging is just under 60 centimeters. In the box, you get a very brief instruction leaflet. I did not find all the instructions here in terms of what you can do with this tripod. So I will go through it step by step in terms of how you can disassemble, assemble, use it as a monopod and why you get four of these Allen type uh, keys. And then there's just a little thank you card for customer support and things like that. Now, first and foremost, just reviewing the carry bag. Don't expect some premium product here. It doesn't even have a sponge for the uh, shoulder strap. It is variable in terms of the length of the shoulder strap, but that's about it. It's sewn on there and sewn on there, so you can't uh, remove the strap, and it's got no additional sponging, so this offers no protection against dropping, but it does allow you a uh, snug fitting. And this does work fine, but it's definitely not premium. In order to get it into the carry bag, you have to have the tripod in this orientation. I'll show you how you get it in this orientation. And there is the handle for the head. And there you can see the mass of the tripod and head is just over two kilograms. Okay, you can see the head plus the handle is just over 0.7 kilograms. And then the remainder is just the tripod itself. Right, moving on. Right, now as I said, in order to get it into the carry bag, it has to be in this orientation, which just is actually folded upside down, if you will. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna extend the uh, leg one by one. And as you can see, I'm extending them. Then I loosen this point over here, and you can see the head can go down like that. Right, so there is the tripod. So it's a little bit taller now when you have the legs in this orientation and that is why it won't get in the bag because as you can see, the bag is now too short. Right, so just showing you how to pack it away if you are gonna be using the bag. It's got these clips here, steel clips, and uh, what you have to do is you have to lift them up. They are quite tight. So you can see there, uh, if I lift the leg, it won't move. I have to completely lift that clip up, flip it upside down, and do the same with the other two. Now you see the head is in the way, I just release this, extend the head, compress the legs and there you go, it's ready for storage. Right, so let me show you how to get started with this thing and I'll give you my review of this tripod having used it now for a few weeks. Right, now if you look closely you will see these indentations here and what that is, it allows you to decide at what angle you want the tripod leg to sit at. As you can see, um, I can set it pretty acute and then if I lift that up, you can see that I can now depress that down and then I've got about a 45 degree now and if I extend it even more, I've so while it's like this, you can see it gives you quite a wide um, footprint now. That's about, what, three inches, just over three inches. And now the tripod is pretty stable. So if you've got quite a heavy camera, this would be useful. So just having a look at that, you're going to get about 65, 64 centimeters to the top of the head. And you could reduce that a little bit by dropping the uh, shaft down a, a marginally, and you'll be getting about 57 centimeters from the ground plane to the top of the head. Now, just comparing it to a compact tripod, you can see substantially higher than one of these uh, compact units. So if you're looking for something that's really close to the ground, well, then you must uh, probably still get something like this. But you can see this is the lowest going to give you. And there, just comparing this one to this one, you've Got quite a difference in the height there you've got about 30 you got about 38 centimeters right so what I've done is I put a DSLR on top of the uh, tripod in this formation and I've got a blower here to simulate some airflow so imagine it was a windy day and your camera stand was just sitting there uh, observing some uh, wildlife or plant life or whatever it is and you want to just see you know what happens when the air flows you know how stable is this gonna be so here we go Alright, so it's fairly stable. I mean, we're not trying to video in a gust of wind, but it, just in case if you wanted to know. It's not 
going to let you down. The trough is not going to fall over. It's pretty stable, especially when the legs are at its full width like that. Right, so here's the tripod. It's in the most acute position in terms of the legs. And this is probably, for me, the most impressive feature of it is how long this neck is. So as you can see, I release this and I can lift the head up all this uh, way and I'll show you what additional length or height you are going to get. You're going to get an additional 35.5 centimeters. Now why I'm highlighting this is this is not that common to get such a reach and for me this is what uh, makes this camera tripod very useful because you don't have to keep extending the legs you can just extend the neck. However it does come with a little downfall. The higher you extend the shaft here the less stable the tripod becomes so uh, when you have it like this at, at full extension just make sure you open the tripod legs otherwise you find that this thing can fall over very easily now i'm not going to do the test you can already see how uh, unstable it is with the neck that high up right now you might be wondering how do you extend these legs and what about the quality of these clips okay so here are the clips and they are plastic there's no two ways about it, they're just plastic. Now it unclips like that and it's quite rigid. It's not a flimsy thing. I was quite impressed to feel how rigid it is. And there we go. And you can see the extension. Now the extension dimensions are different for each partition. For example, the first extension you're getting 27 centimeters. The second one you're getting more, you're getting 29.5. And the very last one you're getting 32 centimeters. Right, just having a look at the rubber at the bottom of the leg here. Um, this is very sticky and you can't peel this off easily. I mean, I've actually tried to peel it off and it's definitely stuck on there. If you're gonna be using this roughly and it gets caught on something and you pull your camera stand it's unlikely that this is just going to fall off while if you look at one like this this would be very a very budget type camera stand and uh, it, firstly you'll notice is this isn't sticky at all this is sticky you see it resists my hand while this one is almost smooth it almost feels just like plastic and then the other problem is you see how it can just peel off. So you could lose this quite easily if this gets caught on something, maybe in your boot of your car or something, and you're pulling on it, and you can see that just comes off. Just comparing it to another camera stand, which is probably in the same range, this is the Voyager, and uh, it's definitely got a solid rubber foot here, but it's got no stickiness. So this would slide, it won't grip onto your floor, your, uh, maybe if it's a tiled smooth floor, you'll find that this will slide quite easily. All right, now let's talk about these clips. As you can see, Uh, just plastic. It's got a metal pin that runs through the center here. It does feel like it could snap here But definitely above average for the camera stands that I've tested and again coming back to this Voyager You can see here that the uh, width of the plastic is wider there on Compared to say the Voyager and also if I fill at the back they are both equally thick So this is just giving you more strength because it is wider now something that's happened to me a lot is if you drop your camera stand you'll find that uh, it cracks on these plastic um, pressure points here because as you tighten it it's actually tightening on the shaft here and it puts pressure on this plastic now if you have a look here i've had to glue this one because it actually slit along these plastic hot fastening points so this is something that i'm concerned about when, when looking at plastic clamps i'm always worried that it just cracks along here so this one did in a few places as you can see there um, it did over there it did over there just having a look at the newer, I feel like these are better. I don't think they will break as easily as the other camera stand, only time will tell. So far, I am satisfied with the strength of these clamps. When inspecting them, I don't have any concerns at the moment. And one thing I like is it's very smooth. As you can see, when I um, open all these tabs here, you can see that there's no preference. For example, this isn't tight while this is medium tight, this is very tight. They're all about the same. Slides out and slides in very smoothly and it's got quite a bit of room there. And obviously when you tighten it, it becomes tight and it doesn't offer any wiggle. Now when fully extended, yes, there is some wiggle if I uh, try and 
bend it up and down there is some wiggle obviously this is very thin aluminium but um, it's not something that I'm concerned about or that I would return it um, I can appreciate that this is a lightweight camera stand right now in the box you got these additional allen keys now here you've got two which are exactly the same size now why it's because as you can see they go in there now if I just turn this one it's turning that one so you have to counter act the movement by the other one so if you want to tighten it you have to hold this one and open and close this one what is this for well it reduces or increases the tension on the leg for example I've now loosened it and um, this tab is quite tight by the way and you can see how loose this leg has become some people might prefer this uh, personally it you'll need to make it quite tight I think the reason for these allen keys is that over time this might become loose and it's obviously much nicer when it offers some resistance so this is why they have included these allen keys so if you make it very tight then obviously it's now offering complete resistance as you can see uh, look at that it is very tight now and uh, over time it does become loose and therefore you can tighten it just recapping how this works as you can see it goes to there it's now locked in place you lift that up and then you uh, drop it down again and then you can see 45 degrees over there and then you've got one more slot here there we go that's probably about 80 degrees now while we're here you can see you've got this section here um, I'm not going to undo that but what this is for is if you want to attach uh, some weighting to your camera stand to make it more stable so this will improve the stability of the camera stand what you can do is you can attach a bag with a brick in it or a sandbag or something and while the camera is in the upright position you can attach something there to improve the center of gravity therefore it won't wobble as much all right just having a look at the maximum extended height All right, so that is 179, but if you take it from the top of the head where you would slide your universal plate, that'll be 180 centimeters. And just shy of the KBV 30L. Right, now I'm going to demonstrate how to disassemble and reassemble this into a monopod. Right, now to turn this into a monopod is quite easy. The red leg, you turn it anti-clockwise and it unscrews like that. Only the red leg comes off. Right, now you want to take the head off. Over here, to unscrew it, you're actually going clockwise. So there we go. Clockwise to unscrew. And there comes the head. Now you discard the remainder of the tripod and you take the one leg and you screw it in clockwise to the head. There we go. And now this is your monopod. So there you can see the fully extended monopod giving you a maximum height of the ground of just over 140 centimeters if you include the head. All right, so having a look at the head, this is what it looks like. Now, the thing that stands out to me, unfortunately, is it doesn't look very premium. The material here does not look like it came out of a very good die. Now, that doesn't mean that it's not going to be functional. Uh, it is functional. It's just that when I feel this, I mean, it's got different um, surface characteristics. Like here, it's rough. Then it's smooth. Um, there, it's got like an indentation. Over there, there's some indentation. If I look over here, it just doesn't look very premium. But I know that is really negative. Okay, now, to put the handle on you can choose that side or that side and how you put it on is you just uh, fast and how you put it on is you just align it there and you fasten this because that gives you ability to maneuver the head all right when you are fitting this on you can select at what level you want the handle and then you just tighten the slot as you can see you've got a lot of different options in terms of where the handle goes now this over here I'm going to show you it works all right so for example I'm going to loosen it now now, as you can see, it's really just a spring head. Uh, it is quite smooth, there's no doubt about it, and it does feel good. So I'm not going to say anything negative about the way this feels. It's springy at the top, and as you can see, it goes back to its kind of horizontal position, and it's springy at the bottom. So you'll kind of set where you want it, and then you just lock it. 
And why I like this is the knob is made, is very practical. It's got a big knob, easy to adjust. You just find the level that you're happy with and then you tighten it. It's almost a one-handed process, so I've got no criticism there, keeping in mind that this is a $75 camera tripod. Right, now in terms of the left-right motion, over here you've got a fastening point and if you fasten it, it locks it in place. If you release it, uh, it does have a fluid type motion and I don't feel any free play there at all. So this is also very good and I've got no criticism. Now, if you come to one of these Allen keys over here and the reason for this Allen key is at the bottom there is like a grub screw there and what, what that's for is it's to stop this from happening. Now you've tightened that and then look what's happening. It's coming loose from the, from the tripod. So to stop that, uh, you've got a grub screw at the bottom here and you can just use your allen key and tighten it so that it doesn't move too freely. So what that allen key is going to now do is going to tighten onto this platform and stop it from coming loose. Now that is locked in place and now all it will be using is this fluid type motion here. So I've actually got no criticism with this uh, movement at all. Now for those who don't want the head on, you can put your camera directly onto the tripod without the head. So all you need to do is remove this, remember it's clockwise, and you'll see this screw here can be flipped. Now check that. So I flip the screw in the other direction, put it back in here. All right, so I put that on and now I flip this in the opposite direction. You see it was like that and I flip it in the other direction. And that is the size for a small amount. For example, if maybe you wanted to use something like this, it's quite common people use with their cell phones. Now you don't need the head, and there you can see straight onto the tripod. And that is also the size for most DSLRs. As you can see, this can go straight onto the tripod, no head. Right, the last thing I'm gonna show in the head is this is what comes with the unit. There you can see uh, it's quite a small one and it slots in here and there's no problem. It does come with one of these for larger amounts if you want standard setup here as you can see and you tighten it there. And something that's quite interesting, this is a replacement made by the same company and I'll just show you something. And you can see it doesn't actually work because look that slots out. The locking pin doesn't actually align to this at all. Look at that. And if I take another manufacturer's one, this is a spare that I've got. Um, as you can see, I mean, this is actually pretty dangerous. Look at that. It goes straight through. The one that comes with this model does not fit into my other head. I've got the KO BV30L uh, tripod, and this doesn't work in it. So that's also something that's concerning. And then you do have your level bubble over there, which also works no problem. Now, very importantly, if I've got a camera sitting here, you can see that when I want to lock it, it's going to hit the camera, which is quite unfortunate. But there is a workaround, and I'm glad the tripod has this feature. If you have a look closely, you can see that this is actually spring-loaded, so you can actually pull that out and adjust it to where it's ever comfortable. So that is a very good feature. So therefore, it won't knock onto your camera body. Just remember that you have to lift that out uh, and release it. Right, this is footage shot with the camera tripod. and going up and down. All right, so in closing, so what do I think? Right, so you can see there it's got quite a few stars here, and um, I think that's justified. I've used this camera stand now several times, and overall, the more I use it, the more I like it. Initially, when I got it, I had some reservations. You see, if you look at this, this is probably computer renderings because mine does definitely does not have this type of texture. 
mine it seems a bit more rough so i wouldn't say that uh, it's as premium and the texture and the smoothness of the materials is like this uh, in the real life holding it in your hand it definitely looks more rough and uh, textured and uh, that looks like the dye isn't as good as it's shown here however it, that doesn't translate to any challenges or obstacles in terms of the functionality the functionality is fine the thing that i like about this the most is the fact that the neck or the, sh the shaft can extend so much Overall, um, maybe I wasn't pretty clear on this, and I just want to highlight this again. You see that locking and loosening le um, fastening point there. If you loosen it and you pull on the handle, the handle will then swing back to the horizontal point. So it's actually just a spring that's got some fluidity, and it just uh, goes back to the horizontal point. So you actually have to lock it in place where you want to uh, do your filming. For this price point, I think it could be quite difficult to beat this. And overall, um, I do like this camera stand. It does look nice. I particularly like the uh, labeling on the side and the red uh, coloring there, the newer and the name. It looks premium. So overall, I give this a thumbs up. Thanks for watching. Cheers.